What up, Neos? It's Yusuf for video game plot summaries. We're still on Enslaved Odyssey to the West. All right, so uh, let's get started, man. Whatever. <laughs> no stories today. So in the last episode, Monkey and Trip escaped a slave ship that Trip had burned to the ground using her hacking skills. Then Trip put a crown on Monkey so that he had to obey her commands and keep her alive or he was going to die. So Monkey understands it's out of the frying pan and into the fire. So now he's in charge of taking care of this little girl who thinks that she's his boss. <laughs> She tells Monkey she wants to get back to her village and they come up with a plan to find the ship that they just abandoned so that Monkey can get his little motorcycle back and then take her to the village like she wants to go. Where we actually left off, Trip gets a power cell in the theater, accidentally sets Monkey off to almost be beaten up by a dog, and then they cover the big mechanical dog with lighting and scaffolding and scan the dog so that they'll be able to use its weaknesses later. The important thing is that Trip has a power cell which is like a battery crystal ball of some sort. I don't know, it looks pretty cool. I wonder if they come in different sizes like regular batteries. Oh well, anyway, let's move on. This game reveals now that Monkey has a hoverboard that he calls a cloud. They cross the Brooklyn Bridge. Trip has a power cell, so she decides she wants to use it on the car stuck on the bridge because she hasn't done something stupid in a while. Okay, Monkey, get in. Well, we make it to the slave ship, but surprise, there is a dog there. Monkey puts Trip's ass back in the car, and this time she stays there. After that, they go to the slave ship that crashed and get Monkey's motorcycle. Yes, it's still in perfect working condition. Maybe they used the power cell on it from the car. They drive to the village. Halfway there, they stop to have a campfire. Monkey is all like, Wah, wah, I don't get to have a family. Trip is like, um, you know, after I set you free from being a hostage, you can totally join my colony and we can screw. No one in my colony is anywhere close to as hot as you are. Command, remove my panties. Wait, never mind. I can't do that. They get to the village that Trip was hyping up. No one lets her in. Trip is all like, hmm, that's funny. Usually everyone is here. Why have the security gates been activated? So how do we get in? Let's keep going to the lookout post. We just need to find a radio and they'll let us in. It doesn't take her too long to find out that everyone is dead. Trip. No, no, no. Trip. dead and they resisted i'm talking about it looked like they came through like some old world war ii shit burned everybody to a crisp it's horrible 
Now, if we were going along with the story, you would think that the robots would show up, capture everybody, and put them on a slave ship to take them to the pyramid. But because Trip needs to have some sort of crazy denial, depression, anxiety attack, she needs to see everybody burn to a crisp like it's World War II in this bitch. Like we haven't seen one napalm robot at all. Yet this whole village has been burned up by napalms. Just the people. There is absolutely no evidence of anything being on fire anywhere else in this village. Anyway, Trip wanders off in denial looking for someone who isn't dead. And somehow she isn't being attacked by mechs, but Monkey is. He finds her finally, and she is like, Oh my god, you were right. The mix came and turned everyone into dead fish. Because of the metaphor, you know. Anyway, she tells Monkey if anyone was alive, they would be in the war room. It's locked from the inside, so she's like, There are survivors. They just don't want to open the door for some reason. The two do a few things to hack the door, like defeat the same dog it did last time, but now he's got a turret. you will come back somehow escape the slavers and make your way home so in case that day comes I'm recording this message for you just to say this it's a blessing for me at this moment to know you're alive I love you Trip. dead daddy since they only have three voices on the payroll, they make Andy Circuits do Daddy's voice, and in the whole scene, Monkey doesn't talk because Andy only really has one serious white guy voice. See what I'm saying? I said, get me home. I'll set you free. I guess I lied. It's like, Trip, I'm your dad. I'm sorry that you had to see me like this, but I think you need to move forward and be really awesome. Then Monkey turns off the recorder and he's like, Trip, I'm sorry that you're hurt. <laughs> now give me a hug. I am not your dad. I just happen to sound like him. The slavers come from the West. So that's where we're going. I want to find out who did this. And then I'm going to kill him. Trip hears the final message from her dad and resolves that she will go to the evil base pyramid and end all of this. Good. 
Now, when I give the say so, you gotta turn very slow. Any tricks? I'm gonna light you up. Now turn. Trip? Is that you? Oh, <gasps> Pigsy! Pigsy! <laughs> <laughs> Are you here alone with her? Where's your father? They first go to Pigsy because he's a friend of Trip's dad or some crap. I don't know. And Trip tells Pigsy she wants to destroy the pyramid for revenge. He's all about that shit because Trip is 19 and he's hoping all the years of grooming Trip will work out. He reveals that he's been doing some recon. And based on the things the robots are taking, he believes they are making a Big Mac. No shit. Do they make anything else in this damn game? The Leviathan. At least that's what I call it. This thing I think they're making, a Mega Mech, the biggest ever created. With that kind of weaponry, you could take on anyone you wanted. So we wait for the salvagers to come back tomorrow and follow them in your flying ship. Exactly. The ship they will use needs parts, which gives the writers a chance to create an unnecessary love triangle. Like, it's pretty clear that Piggy has absolutely no chance. Also, Piggy just found out that Tripp's dad is dead. They were good friends. Now he's like, It sucks to hear about your dad and my good friend. Damn it! So have you given any thought about us? So, we haven't been properly introduced. Pixie. Now, Pixie, how did you pick up a name like that. Having a clue. How about you? What's your name? Monkey. Monkey. <laughs> ah, monkey. Yeah. Yes, that's kind of obvious. Pixie, she can hear every word we say. <clears throat> well, but if, uh, if you want to take your chances, go ahead. so fast. <laughs> yeah, you're a woman already, and uh, maybe I was thinking you might need a man, you know. Pixie tries to holla and gets dissed because he's short and fat. Trip is heightest and weightest. That's when Pixie goes into this blue ball hater phase, where he hates Monkey's guts because he knows him and Trip are gonna smash. It's really cringe. Do you see that, Trip? Do you see that? 
you don't shut up, I'm switching sides. So, Monkey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You use a lot of hair product. What? Hey, Trip. Do you ever get the feeling that destiny holds you in the palm of its hand? Yeah, sometimes. Well, it's not destiny. It's a huge mech! It's a monkey. Do you know what an ice cream is? No. Because you appear to have an ice cream stuck on your head. So, that's the power cell we need. Lucky. Having one just sitting there. Mm. So I should just go and get it, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, one thing, monkey. What? Watch out for the rhino. The rhino? I mean, it's flippin' pathetic. And Trip should have kicked him in the nuts for that crap. Real talk, that was a pretty cool boss intro, though. They defeat the Rhino and confront Pigsy about being a creepy ass man who should be ashamed of himself. Zero accountability. Excuse us a moment. Are you gonna put your fingers in your ears? Did you just try to get me killed? I spilled my heart to Trip. She tells me we're just friends. I know what that means. It means she's had a head turned by a monkey. I don't know what you're talking about. And if you had any sense, you wouldn't be trying to hit my girl who has just lost her father. Ah, so that's your game, huh? Huh? The shoulder to cry on. You're crazy. Crazy like a fox. No! No! Like a pig! <laughs> Then he has the nerve to be upset that the rhino didn't kill them. Shoot them then. You're looking right through the sights of your sniper rifle. Kill monkey. Not like anything will happen, unless you miss. So they get in the ship and they follow the robot for a really long time. Mission Control asks them for flight codes. Pigsy doesn't have them, so they have to escape. We get this gem. Well, this isn't the much. Yeah. Well, at least I get to be on the inside this time. Hey, monkey, would you mind shifting your left arm slightly? I don't really see how I can. It's just your hand is right on my penis. Someone sat down and wrote that and people acted that scene out. The other alternative is that the dude that does the voice for Peppa Pig's father decided to ad-lib this whole penis touching situation. I wonder if there are Peppa Pig outtakes where he's all like, Pepper, you touched my penis. Daddy, get the hell out of my room, you pervert. 
the boar looks really cool. I, like, I have to admit, the graphics and everything that they did on this game look really good. But that's given the fact that there are very many things that they made. Does that make sense? I mean, the rhino is pretty much the only boss we didn't see twice, right? The uh, demolition thing we saw about three times. There's one time when the uh, demolition robot fell when it was about to get a hold of Trip. Um, then the dog, we <laughs> we knocked the the, uh, the theater scaffolding on it, and then we uh, had to fight it straight up, and then we had to fight it straight up, but with a gun. So yeah, they've been redoing the bad guys, but at least they look good in the first designs, you know. Rhino's still pretty dope though. They have to free the boar before they can take it. The whole time, Trip has become incredibly competent. So now Pigsy needs to be the stupid one. They have some pretty wild computer skills. Leave it all to me. And to be fair, according to Wikipedia, Pigsy is doing everything that he does in the Journey to the West novels. He is so arrogant to the point that he isn't aware of his looks and he turns into an ass when the Monkey King teases him. But him lusting after a 19 year old after her dad dies or stating that a big mechanical boar gives him a hard on is a little bit much. Is it just me? Or is this the most beautiful piece of machinery you've ever seen? I mean, I really get off on it. I mean, really get off on it. You know, I don't think we need to know that. Time to get this thing moving. So they free the boar and get a move on. While Pigsy is slaving away as the driver of this overly complicated RV, Monkey and Trip are trying to figure out if they should do the beast with two backs before they get to the pyramid. The dome with all the power cores is a very nice touch. But the scene is stupid. She tries to turn off Monkey's crown and he tells her to turn it back on. Strategically speaking, the helmet is their means of communication, so it isn't such a great idea to discard that. What would be nice is if she could stop the helmet from killing him if he doesn't follow her command. But I guess the gesture of her freeing her slave loses its shine if you add a speech about how helpful the crown is during puzzle solving in combat. Finally, they arrive at the main headquarters, a luminescent pyramid. The evil lair is a really big nightlight. And they got pretty good defense systems. A scorpion mech. And Pigsy blasts it with a cannon and puts it out of commission. <laughs> this mech is awesome! We took out the entire might of the palace and won! Won, I tell you! I'm so sure. But wait, more scorpions. Jeez, and it only takes half an hour for the mech to recharge the cannon. One of the scorpions makes it to the boar, and Monkey has to take it down with the help of Trip giving him weak points to shoot. This is the final boss of the game.
quite, I'm afraid. After all that, no cannon, more scorpions. Pigsy sets the self-destruct sequence and kicks the two love boys out. a couple of things that my mind has grabbed a hold of. And number one, uh, Pigsy could have just reversed the bore and moved backwards while the cannon would recharge. That way the scorpions wouldn't catch up to him as fast. He's running forth like an idiot, so he's closing the distance faster. They were expecting to have front door service. Like, is there a damn valet at this pyramid? Is that why they were just walking forward the whole time? They could have just stopped or reversed or something like that but they didn't and that was a pretty stupid plan number two logically you have no reason to believe that there isn't some more scorpions hidden under the sand you kill one you celebrate then an another two pop up and then you kill the one with the gun and then you kill the other one by your hand and then five more pop up. So what makes you think that you're, you're just going to self-destruct all five of those in the bore and then like seven don't pop up or something like that? That didn't make any sense. Three, Pigsy could have escaped. I mean, if the other guys could escape, why not Pigsy? They don't have an autopilot on that damn thing. You mean to tell me that the whole time that the, that the two lovebirds were sitting in the back, Pigsy was making that arm motion the whole way through? He wasn't like just putting the shit on autopilot and then telling it to go to a s specific destination. It's not as if he needs to look out for obstacles. That boar is huge. So he could have used the same autopilot to get off of the boar at the same time as the other two. There was no reason for him to sacrifice himself. I mean, unless he's just afraid he's never going to get laid again, just giving up all hope. You know what I mean? Also, it's quite possible that the huge size of the boar actually set off the sensors with the scorpions. They probably could have just walked in there by themselves without any trouble, which is what I think happened. The boar exploded those three scorpions, and since there was no working boar, there's no reason for the scorpions to attack it. And that's why Trip and Monkey are free, you know what I mean? To walk into the pyramid anyway. Again, Pigsy didn't have to die. I mean, Pigsy got the shit end of the stick. I mean, not only was he a pig and fat and disgusting and made silly ass jokes, but his story arc was just garbage. First they find him, then he finds out that Trip's dad is dead, so he thinks that he can mac on Trip right after that happens. It's the only reason he's even trying to help Trip is slightly because the dad's dead, but mostly because he's trying to get laid. Then when he puts a certain amount of energy and resources into it, he finds out that he's not going to get laid and that Trip is probably going to start screwing Monkey and that bothers him to the point where he's trying to indirectly kill them. Do you see what I'm saying? Then he turns into some bungling idiot chauffeur for Monkey and Trip where he can't do anything right. He keeps knocking things over. He professes his love for a big ass boar machine, makes him horny. Like what the hell is that all about? So then that all leads to him making a sacrifice with his big machine boar girlfriend while he kicks Monkey and Trip out so that they can live their lives in happiness after they go to the pyramid. So I don't get it. They bring in Pigsy on purpose so that they can lighten up the dynamic between Trip and Monkey, but then they just kind of dispose of him when they want Trip and Monkey to finish this game. It's like the scene needs to be more serious so they get rid of the comedy relief character. It's, it's just, it doesn't sit right with me. Anyway, let's finish this up. Trip and Monkey walk into the pyramid to find what looks to be a cult filled with devotees that are living a virtual reality through the headset that Monkey is wearing. They see the main bad guy, which is also played by Andy Serkis. So he's talking to himself at this point. 
The cult leader says that he's providing something that takes the disciples away from the harsh realities of this world and offers Monkey a peek to judge for himself. I don't know why he needed to put on the mask. He has a headset on already. He has been seeing visions of this place the whole time. Put on the mask. Monkey. Just wait. Trust me. Thing. After Trip does that shit, everyone wakes up to the disappointment of living in a nightlight pyramid in the desert surrounded by mech scorpions. And that's it. The story tries to fool you into believing it's a commentary of something, but I don't know what the hell it is though. Peppa Pig's pedo pop is pulverized? Fuck the real world, it sucks. Play video games until a woman decides you are having too much fun. What is the game trying to say? Has anyone watching played this game before and made sense of it? Why are they collecting slaves? The one guy working in the slaver ship was a slave, right? Are they working or just there pretending to have a life? Does the cult have anything to do with the mechs roaming the city? If so, why did they burn everyone in Tripp's village? Why didn't they just capture them and take them to the pyramid? Monkey and Tripp just showed up and killed the guy who they assumed was responsible for Tripp's village being killed. It looks like he was just telling them not to wake up his cult. And surely there wasn't enough there to explain everyone in the cities being absent, being gone, being disappeared no body traces anywhere except for trips village so that means these people agreed to be taken under and i'm sure they will be ecstatic to wake up out of some perfect world where they were getting laid every day and see trip and monkey standing there like you're welcome for real i mean i appreciate everything this game has done artistically but fuck this game it should it's just some industry plant bullshit if a plot like this was out today you would swear that it was written by ai across the board people thought this game was damn near perfect i took so many naps over this game we need to add it to a sleep study ah <clears throat> all right please be sure to interact comment Hit the thumbs up. This channel is pretty good. Help it out, okay? I deserve more subs than I have, but the algorithm is whack. It's to the point now that I'm watching channels worse than mine with 100k subs. I want that. Let me do a deal with Raid Shadow Legends in the middle of a review for a game that's just like it. That I hate. 
Like and subscribe and comment for that shit. Do it. <laughs> Until next time, y'all save me like Neo saved Agent Smith. Peace.